Now that it's warmed up, I've moved out of my neighbor's cabin and into my tent. In this update, I'm going to highlight how I've been spending my time outdoors. Since living here, I started cooking on the fire more often and learning what's edible around here. Here's dandelion. Here's some wild thyme and wild carrots. Pull these straight out of the ground. They grow everywhere. Some of you have been asking, what am I eating out here? Here is what I'm getting ready to make. Fritters, like once again, with onions, uh, nettle, dandelions, some wild thyme. I'm gonna mix it up with uh, flour and see what comes. So I mixed up the batter, cooked the onions and nettle. Now this stuff goes in here. And add some sunflower seeds and add in turmeric. And here I've got my pancake pan. And voila, tasty fritters. Huh, how pretty. I must say one of my recent addictions is the neighbor's milk. She gets it fresh two times a day and it just tastes so good that it's unpasteurized milk. Nothing's been done to it. You can leave it out in the sun all day and then drink it when it's warm and <laughs> the flavor changes and it's good. <laughs> it's a nice idea of thinking of all the different bacteria that my body is getting used to just going through the change of living in the forest, drinking milk that goes sour. <laughs> Otherwise, I've been trying to adjust my old habits with this land. Here I'm doing homework, writing in my journal on my hill. It's so hard to convince myself to do creative stuff and, and drawing so far on this land because all I want to do is work. I had to convince myself to stop working so that I could do this. I'm going for a wild run through my land for the first time. I've got my labyrinth flat fingers on and it's about time I go and explore this area. Sometimes the path disappears and you just gotta make your own path. It's scary seeing so many fresh logs cut, especially when you always hear it in the background. It's crazy because I felt like Lithuania was one of the last places to be left untouched, but it seems like nowhere escapes globalization. All of this is likely exported. I remember biking through and getting lost through this forest last year. It's crazy how fast things change. In Europe, cigarette packaging requires that you show a picture of the adverse health effects uh, that smoking can do to you. It lets you know what you're contributing to. I wish when they sold lumber, they would also show a picture of what it does to the forest and the places that were cut down to bring that lumber there. Buy lumber, you're probably not thinking about the neighbors and all the people who live in this area what it looks like to their neighborhood when an entire place gets cleared what i didn't realize living in the city is that it closes you off like a bubble from the imported effects on the surroundings when you buy a phone you don't think that importing a resource from uh, republic of congo some place like the, one of the poorest countries in the world and you don't see the impact of all that stuff until or if you go outside of the city and you get lost in the real world and you get to see the effects oh i must admit there's something soothing about running through green fields I'm figuring out what I should be working on right now. So I've got a list of things. I'm figuring out where to store my food. For the time being, I'm storing my stuff hanging on a tree and I'm still figuring it out as it goes. I helped one of my neighbors out and she gave me food from her farm and figuring out what I should be doing now. So I'm gonna sand, plant seeds, throw compost somewhere. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of juggling and not knowing what to do. And it's April 14th and I'm a little late in getting into setting up the garden because I should have mulched this land last fall, but I didn't own the land yet. So I have to make do with the time I have. So every time I've been coming back from the city, I've been coming back with, if somebody would give me a ride, 
like my friend Emma, she'd help me pick out cardboard from the trash, like anything that, that is biomass that will break down and add to the compost. And hopefully it'll prepare the ground. It's already starting to kill some of the grass. Well, I don't expect this whole little amount of compost and, and carbon to make much of a difference. So I do enjoy knowing where my trash compost will go. And my hope is that it'll bring back some of the microbes and bacteria into this ground. Which, as I drown it out from sunlight, So yeah, there's bits of compost like this all over, hidden underneath the, the straw here. Good thing I decided to clean up because I found this, this bag of cardboard that I had packed away last month. And when you don't have compost and all the supplies for a no-dig, you improvise. So I'm trying to lay the paper down, the trash down as much as possible to suffocate all the plants and then I'll cover it back up with this mulch so it all just decompose. Mm. Ikea instructions. Does this look familiar? No. Decompose. Finally, I have a proper burial ground for all of my old paper bills. Whoo, bye bye. And that's the modification to my ghetto no dig. It's April 16th. The rocket stove is not done, as you can see. I decided to start prepping the first garden bed inside the greenhouse. Um, eventually I will get that other side, but I want to start small. So I already uh, loosened up the earth underneath. I threw some, some black ground and then I've got these grasses here. And I just fetched some chicken manure from my neighbors up on the hill. And now I'm gonna lay it down. And the Rigo that's brought me a whole sack of black earth. It's from. about time I plant something in the greenhouse. So I've got chop suey in this corner, sprinkled some cumin along the length here. And then French sorrel is this sector. Red sorrel is a bigger section. And then kale is the majority. And then I threw all of the seed bit of them in the corner. So it's a mystery corner. Now I'm gonna plant some radishes and the rest and then add some thyme. I just sprinkled some more soil on top and then lastly I scattered some thyme. So there's a potpourri of different springtime plants growing. Here I'm starting to pile up the logs for a hugel culture and these plants are all gonna go there. So there's mostly just birch and pine trees, which are slightly acidic. So as I'm going to go dig around in, in the forest over there on the side of the hill, see if there's anything rotting that I can bring over. So I'm searching for big rotten logs to throw into my hugelkultur garden. As far as I understand with hugelkultur, there is living and dead matter, well mostly just dead logs going underneath. I usually see the hugelkultur is very moundy. Whereas with this, I don't know, I'm making the center a little bit deeper, but otherwise it's gonna be similar size garden bed to this other one. So I've got the first layer down. Now I'm gonna get the rest of this dead wood on and then the ground. So I collected even some fat sticks from the river and other rotten logs and stuff and I broke it up as much as I could. And voila, I've got a makeshift garden bed. And there you go, all the tomatoes. And the cucumbers have a home. It's already the 1st of May. I've been bad about updating here. It's still a drought. It hasn't rained here in weeks. It finally rained after an entire month uh, of a drought. And this place is already starting to transform in, in terms of greenery. All of the, the moss here came back to life. And... Same here, this was a, a dilapidated pile of redness. Everything is recovering. And it's even raining a little bit right now. Whoopee.
today. My father is coming and otherwise I'm cleaning up. Even though it's a mess, it's getting me thinking that it's kind of a, a chaotic organization. It's my father is very keen on order and it's getting me thinking that there's a difference between typical systematical ordering where everything has its place and the creativity that comes from chaos. So I'm leaning a bit in, in between. I need a little bit of chaos in my life so that, for example, I can find new uses for for things that are laying around. Like I have no idea where this pole is going to be needed, but I know it will be needed at some point. And then I've got some trash like this outer wheel that I found on the territory. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I it helps seeing it so that I can be reminded of it. And to other people, it might look like a mess. A <laughs> good example of ordered chaos is realizing that I need something to help me with cooking here. And I've got these bricks right here. So I might as well start playing around with them. Strange thing about coming into possession of new land is finding trash. Like this big tire that was just incognito in between the weeds. And now it's the question, what am I going to do with that tire? I could get rid of it, send it off to a garbage dump, but that wouldn't really solve the problem. It would just postpone it on elsewhere. Now that it's springtime, I'm having to relocate a lot more tiny trees that just sprouted up in the past month or two, or I just did not see them. And otherwise, my brother's friend Scott gave me a hammock two years ago, and finally, I've got a home for it. I just gotta figure out where to move my bike, and I gotta figure out how to organize all this crap. Lately, I've been pretty bad about documenting, and that's partly to do because I left two of my spare GoPro batteries back, and my phone is crappy. It's been cold this past week compared to all last month and I transplanted these tomatoes since last time and I, I'm trying out with these trash bottles, these plastic bottles and uh, glass vases here to store water while I leave. And I filled these up last night and they don't seem to be going down. And the water, the ground is moist so I'll see how well they work. Here, I've got cucumbers growing, and radishes, and the weeds, and all these whatever whatnots. I'm realizing that I'm lacking some very basic things, like a table. I have table surfaces, but I don't have a way to put these final things together. I started collecting corners for a table, and I found this hollowed out section. So I've got these little experiments like peas growing here and then a, a paprika plant. It's May 9th. All of April was warm. May has been dropping below freezing. I heard that 70% of the, the harvest, some statistic I heard just today, is, has died off because the flowers froze in the winter. And here are some logs that I'm going to try to make a table from. I still don't know the best way to connect these. Uh, my, so far, this is the closest thing I have to a tabletop. I wanna find a, a good secure way to fasten these logs to it. Otherwise, project on the rocket stove has stalled uh, because as you can see, my, my wheelbarrow there, it needs repairs, it's dinky. I realize it doesn't really hold up with carrying all of the, the clay and the, the stones and dirt because I've been sourcing all of the clay and sand manually by wheelbarrow from my neighbors or from up the hill. So I'm really dependent on the good wheelbarrow. And my dad helped me buy a new wheelbarrow with two wheels, a sturdy one, but I got it and both wheels were defected. So. The progress on the rocket stove has been very minimal. Uh, here's what it looks like from this side. I've got some, ooh, a weed growing. Oh, it's a lamb's quarter. 
and otherwise I've been learning how to eat lots of the weeds. I've been eating well and trying to learn how to transplant apple trees and at the same time how to graft them. So I found a bunch of trees that look like they might be apple trees from under my apple tree. I'm hoping it's an apple tree. I tried grafting some of them too. Here I need to clean up. This was my first graft ever and look how terrible of a job it is. It's got sand everywhere. I didn't take off the paper from one side. I still have yet to clip uh, the top of this and, and disinfect it. If these are in fact apple trees, which I think they are, then <laughs> it might survive. But. Uh, I have many of these sort of experiments on the Castle Hill. You experiment in grafting on wild apple trees, and I know a lot of them are not going to survive, but it's a learning process.